<clears throat> Hello, guys, and welcome to Newcastle Fans TV. And I'm your presenter, Steve. And uh, in a quick moment or two, I will be bringing on one of uh, the local guys, Andy, from our um, from uh, Newcastle Fans TV membership club sort of thing. So um, I guess I'll plug that in real quick and talk about uh, why you should become a member of Newcastle Fans TV. Um, you get tons of videos every month, at least 20 or 30. You get to find out who's going to be on the Greenwood and Moliner show before, um, you know, before it's, it's, you know, the videos out and whatnot. Um, only 99 pence a month. It starts at that. And then you get to have access to our discord. Um, you know, I've got to do some work on the discord, but you know, a lot of good stuff. I think it's a good value for money. And I've been a member for, um, about 17 months now. So I, 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 you know, I think it's worth every penny and um, definitely consider subscribing um, to Newcastle Fans TV and becoming a member. Um, so today we've got a few things to discuss uh, about five different players that, um, and a few that I, you know, a few that I um, would suggest um, a few guys like maybe we could sign like a John Brooks or Ludovic Ajort from Strasbourg um, just, you know, to get in a striker because I think that's a big priority. But the five guys I'm going to be talking about today that we've been linked with are um, Harvey Barnes from Leicester City, Duvan Zapata from Atalanta, um, some news coming um, from Lyon regarding the, uh, you know, regarding Paquita. Um, and then the two others, we've got Julian Julian Draxler from Paris Saint-Germain. And finally, we have, um, who was the third guy? Jesus, I don't know why I forget. The third guy from Ren, yes. The third guy from Ren, uh, Kamaldine Suleimana. We've been linked with him, and I, I think one other club or two has been linked with him. The uh, 20-year-old Ghanaian uh, wonder kid from Star René. Um, and Andrew from the comments saying he's class, Suleiman, I meant. Uh, Jack, I'm assuming, uh, need to sign an attacker soon. I would agree with that too. We, we, we do need an attacker. I think that would definitely bolster, you know, our squad and whatnot. We need some more goals because Calvin Wilson, you know, I love him, but the fitness is a problem. Um, but, yes, let's um, let's get into this, guys. So, our first news you know, our first thing that I'm going to discuss is um, Brendan Rodgers, you know, the story around um, Newcastle wanting um, Harvey Barnes from Leicester City, uh, English left winger. Um, you know, he's a very, very good player and he costs about 50 million pounds, 24 years old. Um, Jack in the comments thinks 50 million is an absolute joke. Yeah. That might be a little bit too high. I, I think for Harvey Barnes, if if he had a different name, possibly, um, I would or a different nationality. I think you might he, you might be on the money with that. He to be honest, he probably is about a thirty five million pound player. Um, I would pay fifty million for a guy like Jared Bowen because I think he's just a little bit more prolific of a winger compared to to uh, Harvey Barnes, but Harvey Barnes is still, regardless, a very good player. So that's where our first story comes from. Um, this is from LeicesterMercury.co.uk, and um, he's linked with a move to Newcastle this summer. Comments made by Brendan Rodgers give some insight into why Newcastle United are said to be keen on Leicester City star Harvey Barnes. Barnes is reportedly on the Magpies radar with Eddie Howe reportedly keen to buy a quick wide attacker. Um, let's see what else we got. Who is under contract until 2025. So that could possibly explain the 50 million price tag, to be honest, because if he's still got three more years left of his contract, you know, if it was one or two years, we might be talking a different story. But 50 mil is the price tag that Lester apparently are putting on him. Um, the 24-year-old has, has previously been linked with Liverpool on the back of some impressive performances, which no doubt he is a very impressive player. Speaking about City's graduate, uh, City's academy graduate last year, I, I actually had no idea about that. Uh, Roger said, I believe he's going to become a really, really top player in the next few years. 
when I came in, you could see the talent, but he needed to score more goals. And week by week, he started to do that. I think the only thing that will stop him will be availability. If he can stay injury-free and get that little bit of luck, you can just see his game coming together. He's got that hunger and is gaining confidence all the time. What's great about Harvey is he's a very humble boy. He doesn't get carried away with it. He comes in with a wonderful attitude. So that's definitely something that's a big, big, big positive because, um, you know, we don't want guys who have lousy attitudes and are just going to cause shit. Since being handed his senior debut at the King Power 2016, Barnes has gone on to make 145 appearances for Leicester City, scoring 32 and providing 29 assists, which is 70. No. No, yeah, 71. Yeah, 30, 20, 50. 61. 61 goal contributions. Sorry. So 61 goal contributions and 145. That's not too bad. So um, that's the that's that first story out of the way. Um, now, what are my thoughts on it? Um, I would agree with Jack in the comments that 35 million is probably the, the, the limit I would go. But I do understand why Lester feel justified in putting – 50 million on his head. Number one, you'd be selling to a direct rival who you're competing for European spots with. Number two, he's been playing, you know, he's, he's, he, you know, he's been playing for Leicester since 2016. And um, he's, he's clearly, I guess, Premier League proven that'll add some more money onto it. He's English. That'll add some more, you know, another few million on top of that. Um, I think he's a really good player. I'd say about 35 mil max. If he was on like Jared Bowen type numbers, then I could understand. But um, to bring in another perspective about Harvey Barnes, I'll bring in Andy. What's going on? How you doing? Steve, lad. Hope, hope you're all well, everybody. Um, yeah. Fantastic player, mate. A young English. Yeah. He does miss a few games throughout the season. Um, yeah. And the price tag just reflects the fact that he's English, I think. Um, yeah. For me, his numbers... I'd pay 50 million from. I really would. It's a gamble mm. worth taking. It, it is a lot of money. It's 50 million. I th you, you need it. I think we were talking before we went live. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, it's assists. We need someone that creates goals. He gets assists. Yeah. That's true. Because last year, if I pull up some stats, he's got for last year across all competitions. He had he had 47 appearances in all competitions, FA Cup, Community Shield, the FL Cup, Prem, Conference League, etc. 47 appearances, 11 goals, 14 assists, only two yellow cards. So that is a um, – he had 3,000 minutes played um, in that time, which isn't it, – you know, it's not that bad. What I do like a lot about Harvey Barnes is that Lester do look a pretty different side without him playing. And I think that could be one of the reasons why they struggled last year, to be honest, because he does offer something on the wing that's very different to the other guys they got. So I, 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 I do see the impact that Harvey Barnes makes. And to be honest, if we had him in our team, I think he would make a big impact. Um, but what? Uh, how do you feel? Do you feel do you have freedom? What? He also gives you the freedom that you can play him anywhere across the front three. You can play him off a striker. Yeah. You can put him on the right hand side. I think he scored a brilliant goal against Southampton, or was it West Ham? Where he cut yeah. in from the right hand side and put in the up into his left foot. You know, this is what we've been wanting the SM to do: cut in, whip on the top corner. This guy can do it on his weak foot. Yes. No, yeah, he's very good with both feet, too. That's another one of his strengths. I think when Lester do counterattack, that he's got some real good speed to him. Um, not the quickest player ever, but definitely, I would say, above average. Uh, good dribbler. Um, I think he would be a good signing. Fifty mil And to be honest, we need a left winger, and I think that could push ASM, which is something else we were talking about before. Because me and you both think that ASM plays better on the right. He's more unpredictable on the right. So if you had Harvey Barnes, Calum Wilson, maybe we can upgrade on him. And then ASM on the right, that's a pretty damn good front three to have. To yeah, be honest. I mean, we have this conversation quite a lot, Steve. I mean, we, we do know that ASM gets involved in the game more on the left-hand side. But as yeah. you said quite correctly, 
when we were speaking, that was only when Jet Row Williams was with her. Since yeah. Jet Row Williams left, he struggled really for any consistency of any kind on the left hand side. And yeah. most of the assists that I've seen from last season are come from the right hand side. You know, yeah. a, a header, I think it was a header for, um, I can't remember who scored the header that he set up last season. Um, I think it might have been Sean Longstaff, but right. I just think it's easier for him to get to the byline and put a ball in yeah. and maybe get into the box and get brought down and get with penalties than it is for him to keep cutting in and give the ball away or put a shot into the Gallagher. Right. Right, Sorry, yeah. Is my, stream, is my stream breaking up? Oh, okay. No, it, it is a tiny bit, but nothing nothing too bad. Uh, we'll look over some comments real quick, though. Uh, Jack, who's that guy? Roland Shalai is the guy, by the way, who got a brace against England. He's Hungarian and plays in the Bundesliga for Freiburg, who had an excellent season. Would be great on the right or even up front, which he played. He played on the right in that game against England and did fantastically well, to be honest. Um, so I would definitely – I would take a look at Roland Shalai. Why not? Um, Daniel Lintern. Not a fan of Barnes. I'd be willing to take a punt on Memphis Depay for $20 million and try to get Broya on loan to buy. Interesting idea there. Um, Andy might have froze out, so I'll just take him out of the picture for a sec. Um, but I'll give my thoughts. I'll, um, well, let's see. Yeah, I addressed that comment about Shalai. I would definitely take him. It wouldn't cost too much. I think he's got he's a good technical player, good finisher for a right winger especially. I would take Shala. Um, Not a fan of Barnes. But, uh, yes, Memphis, Memphis. My verdict on Memphis Depay, would I take him at Newcastle? Um, yeah, probably for $20 million. Why not? I, I, I don't see the issue really. Um, yes, he did struggle at, at Manchester United when he was, what, 19 or 20 years old under, under Van Hall. Um, but I do think that over the years he's matured his game and – matured in his head a little bit um he still does all the all the rap stuff um he, to be honest I, I i quite like the guy and i thought at leon you know he was one of my favorite players to watch he can score free kicks assists i mean the guy the guy has a very well-rounded game decent with both feet could play anywhere up across the front three i think um we could offer you know match his wage demands what he's getting at barcelona so I don't see why that would necessarily be a problem. And Andy's back. Sorry, guys. Reverted to the mobile phone. Apologies for my, my laptop. It's uh, going through the window. That's all right. That's all right. Um, I was just talking about Memphis Depay, Andy, because it brought it up here. So I ultimately, I would take him because I, I think it is a bit harsh to judge him on his time at Manchester United because he was so young. I think he left. I think he left PSV Eindhoven a year or two early. Um, I think he could have used another year in the Eredivisie to, to, to you know, really develop. And yeah, so I, I think it would be a bit harsh um, to count that necessarily against him because in every other team he's played in, he's absolutely smashed it at Lyon and at Barca. At times, he's smashed it. Maybe, maybe not smashed it at Barcelona, but he did do pretty all right for them. And if you could do well for Barcelona. Then, you know, I, 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 the one thing I will always say about him is every time I've seen him in a Dutch shirt, mate, he's impressed us. Oh, so it seems as unreal. if if he can get his head in the right place, then you can get performances out of him. I, I, I think I read yesterday getting 16 goals for Barcelona last season, um, and I remember at the start of the season, Barcelona were really struggling, and he was he was carrying them a little bit. Yeah. So if a player like that's available for that type of money, you've got it. You've got to consider it. Yes. Yeah, absolutely consider it. And then also, in second part of his comment, was trying to get Armando Broya, the Albanian, on loan from Chelsea. Do you think that might be? I, I would. I'd be all over that, to be honest. He nice. only did. Get, he only did get six goals, but it's not a. I'm not always a stats guy. I like stats, but to me, Broya, whenever I watched him play for Southampton, the maybe twenty or so times, he passed the eye test. Pretty much every time because of his physicality, good runs. He doesn't look out of place on a Premier League side. Yeah, uh, and he's a little bit of chip off the old block, isn't he? When he's, he's an old-fashioned centre-forward, he brings yeah. other people into play. He didn't start a great deal of games for Southampton last season. 
I think yeah. the majority of his performances were the games where he's caught the eye were when he has started and he's getting a couple off the bench. Um, I, I, I'd, I'd love for us to be able to get him on a loan to be able to have a permanent deal. Because, um, you know, he's sitting at a club where all of the youngsters keep continually getting sent out on loan. You, yeah. He'll want some consistency in his career. You know, he doesn't want to be sitting there, keep getting sent out on loan all the time. He'll want someone yeah. to say, look, we have faith in you. We're going to give you a contract. You might not start every week at the moment. Wilson's ahead of you. But, but you'll be just... ahead of Chris Wood. I don't see exactly. why. I don't see why he wouldn't be above the pecking order in terms of. of You're going to get above games above. because Wilson yes. will miss games. He will get games because I think we will go pretty far, farther than usual in the cup competitions and whatnot. So yeah. I, I, I think, yeah, that would be a great fit, and I don't think it would cost too, too much money. Maybe a, he would definitely his value would have gone up after that pretty good season but that's that's my thing with bro yes he passed the eye test i would like some more goals but he did a lot of his goals he finished off very very well and the eye test the eye test how old is he 20 21 is he yeah he's super young a lot a lot of he's got a lot of you know these games going to improve i mean if you're getting six goals as a second technically a second striker for southampton last season that's not right. that's not too bad yeah, and there was some decent striker competition too on Southampton. Shea Adams is probably the main guy there, and then he kept Armstrong out for a little bit. So yeah. um, clearly, he doesn't mind the competition. Granted, they play more of, with two strikers, but I and he seems I as if he's up. he's not frightened to get stuck in. I, I like how he occupies yeah. centre halves, and he's he's really up for a, a bit of a, a duel. And there's not very many of them that knocking about now. Not that age. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Very, very true. Um, Let's see another comment or two. Manveer Singh. We shouldn't be talking about Harvey Barnes. It should be Depay and Paqueta in the conversation. I wish to Bellic- I would. I, oh no, I would. I would love Paqueta. Would he be played as a winger if Murphy went? Then Paqueta would be a free man to have a mid position. So I wish Willick would be played as a winger. That's interesting. I'll we'll talk about Willick later, but I I, I can understand. Look, th- Harvey Barnes is not my number one priority, but I do think. That would be a move worth making, to be honest. Um, Greg Monks with Wilson and Wood up front. I just can't see us getting another attack. I think we need one though. We I think, to. and I, to. yeah, absolutely have to. I think you could get you could get away with Chris Wood if it was the what fourth round of the FA Cup in January, and, and we're playing Aldershot Town or some you know some goofy little team like that. Yeah, you could get away with playing Chris Wood and Jacob Murphy. Like that, you know, but when you consider the, the ammunition is exactly the same service as what we had last season for Chris Wood, unless you're bringing someone in like a Harrison that's going to be putting crosses into the box. Yes. The, the, the focal point of Chris Wood, his strengths have not be, are not going to be increased this season because we haven't brought in the supply line for him. You know, and you don't want to be focusing your supply line on Chris Wood. You want to be focusing it around Wilson in a potential younger striker like an Eggie Tiki yeah. who we were looking at. More of on the ground movement players. Chris Wood, but, I'm sure uh, at times, yeah, is yeah. going to play a vital role as, as a squad player this season. But yeah. we cannot be dependent on him to play long periods when Wilson's out. Otherwise, yeah. it's going to cost for places in the league. Yeah, exactly. Aaron Taylor, I really hope we pull the trigger with Paqueta. Arsenal are sniffing after him and would be a symbolic revenge after Bruno turned them down. Yeah, that would really piss Arsenal off, possibly if um, if they don't get uh, if Paqueta does not go to Arsenal and picks us again. Yeah, that'd be crazy. Um, doesn't Paqueta play as a left-sided attacker for Brazil? Get ASM on the right. Totally, to- uh, totally agree with the Wood point too. Uh, now Paqueta playing as a left-sided attacker for Brazil. Well, since you know, since we're talking about Paqueta. I'll come back to that comment in a minute, but there is some news about uh, Paqueta. Obviously, nothing, nothing too crazy. But Lyon are considering, um, you know, selling him, and they know that he wants to leave. So it might be in Lyon's best interest to sell now while the player wants to go, and his value is very, very high. Uh, they could easily probably get for, uh, 50, 60 million 
you know, euros or pound, whatever you want to do it. You know, however you Isn't want there it. some complication about the ownership of Leon at the moment? I was uh, watching yes. another um, Newcastle United uh, YouTuber um, yesterday, and the, the, what they said it was quite interesting. Although it, uh, I'm sure all of us were struggling to keep up with it. They're, you know, they're owned by so many different people, and uh, while someone's trying to buy a, a majority stake, they're, they're not allowed yeah. to sell or buy players. So if we are going to do it, we need to get a move on. Yeah, they are basically. Uh, John Texter it took over from Leon, and um, Jean-Michel Olas, the very controversial <laughs> figure at Leon, he is. Um, he is. He, he's kind of. He's he's not step he'll he'll step down in about two or three years, but he's gonna definitely take a back seat in terms of you know decision making and stuff. Um, right. It's very interesting for Leon at the moment because yeah they you know they've signed guys like uh, Lacazette on a free. They've actually done some decent business, um, but you're right they are looking to trim their uh, squad down a bit. Um, and Leon, uh, uh, what's his name? Bruno Cheru has made the admission that they would be selling him or, you know, open. They, they've prepared for all eventualities. I think that's what yeah. I read. Yeah, exactly. So let me pull up that real quick. Uh, Leon make Lucas Pacheta exit admission admit amid Newcastle United transfer links. Leon, yes, the recruitment chief Bruno Cheru has confessed he, he could be helpless to keep Pacheta this summer. Newcastle United have been linked with the Brazilians in signing Guimaraes from the French outfit in January. The two international teammates and best friends, which helps. I mean, it doesn't hurt. With Paqueta spotted on Tyneside in May to celebrate Guimaraes' long-term girlfriend's birthday. Fan excitement reached fever pitch when the two were snapped together, which was a weird incident. But Rumor is it he scored two goals in his back garden as well. Yeah, yeah. However, Leon have now admitted that they are prepared to sell their asset amid reported Newcastle United interest. France reports that um, reports in France claim the Ligue 1 club would. Jesus, why are the pop-ups? The Ligue 1 club would accept a reduced offer of around 34 million pounds for the midfielder, which I think would be a bit underselling him um, because. Number one, people are always talking about, well, isn't there going to be a Newcastle tax? And number two, you've got to keep in mind that AC Milan do get, I believe, 10 or 20% of any future transfer. Um, so if that was the case, if... if uh, You're looking more, more towards 45 million, so they can pocket 34 million. I think that's... Yeah, exactly. Yeah, probably more, you know, they'd be looking to be able to get that amount in. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Greg Monk's good comment here. His, va his value is going to fly up um, during and after the World Cup. Let's get him now. No, he's good. I think he's going to have an excellent World Cup because Brazil, you would think you're going to have a really good World Cup. Papers and media appear to state we have 50 mil. Paqueta takes the full budget and would still leave us short. Now, thoughts on Ismail Lassar from Watford. At what pricing would you take him? I'll answer Daniel's that. got a great point there, but I put this to Daniel. If you were to get Paqueta, or Paqueta, or however you want to pronounce his name, but then get Belotti on a free. Would you be happy with that? I wouldn't. I wouldn't mind that. I wasn't exactly super impressed with Belotti last year at Torino, but I think one one thing he does bring is physicality, and he's a decently mobile player. So I think that would be interesting. Um, I just worry, and I, I think fitness at times too has been a bit shaky for Belotti at Torino. I mean, I think I still think that there's a real good player in there. Um, but, yeah, I, I would probably take him on a free because it's better than having no depth at that striker position if Wilson, yeah. it, Wilson will get injured. It's very yeah. unfortunate because I love the guy to bits, and he scores when he plays. But yeah, I've been on this channel, and I've said before that I'm a big fan of Shmana Saar. The only thing that I get is, is he levels above – what we have. I mean, if we look at Tamiki in preseason, I'm not getting carried away, but if you look at his form towards the end of last season and then his form in preseason, if we don't sign anyone between now and Nottingham Forest game, my bet is he would be starting on the right hand side. 
And I honestly think yeah. that Eddie Howe is going to give him an opportunity. Whether we bring someone in late on before the Nottingham Forest game, I still think Miggy will start that game because he's going to be given, op- given an opportunity. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I'm a fan of Ishmael. So I, I am. I, and I just think if we could get that Piquet, I, I, I just think he's a key. We need someone in midfield that can unlock the doors. And get goals and assists because that's goals, what we exactly. need. Because Bruno can do that, no doubt about it, but um, that's not his main. That you know, that's not his main job. His his main job is just being in and amongst pretty much everything in, in the midfield, getting you know, getting getting a few goals and assists. But that's not exactly part of his game. But obviously, what we saw last year, he's already surpassed his goal total from his whole Leon career. So. Yeah, it's interesting. Bordeaux, Bobby, my guy is every name pronunciation spot on. Fair play. I do my research and I watch a lot of the leagues, so I listen to the announcer say it over and over. It just happens. Andrew's still frozen. Maybe consider popping out and in a. I'm all right now, Anna. No, you're still frozen. Oh, for God's sake! <laughs> That's all you're right. You're joking, aren't you? No, I'm not joking. Right, okay, I'm going to pop back out. Sorry, guys. No worries, no worries. Um, we'll move on to uh, what do you guys want to talk about next? Or actually, let's go to – let's talk about a striker. We're on the subject of strikers, attackers in general. Um, let's see here. Let's talk about Duvan Zapata. Duvan Zapata. Let's talk about, let's talk about Zapata. Yeah. From Atalanta to Newcastle, and I'll share this story right here. Newcastle United, 21 million transfer target due on Tyneside this week. Newcastle will get a closer look at Atalanta striker Duvan Zapata this weekend. Or not this weekend, this week. 31-year-old Colombian has been linked to the move to Newcastle since January, as Eddie Howe obviously eyes uh, some attacking reinforcements. Since joining Atalanta in 2018, Duvan Zapata has scored 79 goals in 162 appearances in all competitions, including 13 and 32 last season. His goal scoring for context in um in the Serie A, regardless of what you think of the I'll league. Just be is, on Steve, sorry. Yeah, no worries. Whatever you think of, of Serie A, I think that you know. He is a top striker in there. Him and Luis Moriel at Atalanta the past few years have been absolutely prolific. Um, I think this would be a great signing, to be honest. Uh, since joining Atalanta, yeah, I read that. Now the Italian side are reportedly willing to sell the six foot two frontman this summer with Italian newspaper Leco di Bergamo um, later, uh, claiming an asking price of 25 million euros has been set. Um, with Atalanta not competing in Europe next season, they're going to have to find some money, obviously. Zapata could be tempted to explore options elsewhere. But he remains involved in Atalanta's first-team plans as it stands. Played for uh, 75 minutes in a 4-0 win over Serie B side Como on Saturday. And an ass- he grabbed an assist for new signing Ederson from Salernitana. He's a very good young Brazilian midfielder. Definitely keep an eye on Ederson. For any of you interested, he's a handful. I've seen him a few times, and he is a right handful. I don't think he's technical built. He's up there with some players we've been linked with, but he's a an off handful, and he he's in the right areas at times. Yeah, and he's he, he's a phys, he's physically he's just a brute, absolute brute. I mean, the guy, the guy, um, he bullies defenders, and. With him and with him and Louis, uh, Luis Muriel, what they did was that was one of my favorite two striker formations because Zapata is the power, and then Luis Muriel was just the wicked pace, and those guys would just play each other, for, uh, you know, play off each other. Ryan Bellamy back in the day. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, it's just it was someone, it, it, you know, he's he's someone I would absolutely think would smash the Premier League to bits. Guy would be. His, his age is an issue, like um, Ginger Swizz says. It's about his age yeah. would be an issue at 31, but his underlying numbers are very good. Minimum of 13 expected goals each of the last four seasons. Takes a lot of shots, yeah, big shot volume. He's creative, like I said, with Muriel. He 
very good link up player, can really do it all. And he's not going to struggle in the Premier League for physicality. He's, he, he's just he's he's a, a force of nature. We're going to just add to the physicality that we're going to we're going to be such a threat from corners. When you think of the. Um, oh. Yeah, the, you know, on the occasions that Chris Wood's playing as well, you've got Dan Byrne, you've got Botman, you know, Chris Wood in the side. I'm sure Callum Wilson's six foot, six foot one. We've got some real good headers of the ball as well. So we're going to be a threat. Do you think 21.1 million or 21 million is about a fair price for him, Andy, based off what you've seen of Zapata? Um, Considering that the game he played, I think it was Man United. I watched them against um, Champions League without, last year. Without doubt, I mean, I've seen it. I know of him well before that, but he seems to have sporadic. Either he gets injured or he's out of form for a bit, of, and then he has. He's a bit of a form player, isn't he? Let, let's be honest. But um, as a backup for Wilson, I mean, twenty million. What, what's twenty million nowadays? Adam yeah. Armstrong went to Southampton for nearly that. Yeah. So, yeah, exactly. and, yes, and, okay, he's 31, but the T get two and a half seasons out of him and he helps you get into Europe. He's, he's paid for his fee. Worth, he's every paid money. worth every penny. And we could also, like Greg said, stagger the payments like we would, what we did with Pope. That's and that it. was only, what, Pope was 30, 20 or 30 million? Sorry, who? Pope? Yeah, Nick Pope from Burnley. That was only 10 20. Million. Oh, 10? Yeah, yeah. I yeah, think I mean, we paid yeah. three, three and yeah. a half million up front and then the rest's... Staggered over, exactly. excuse me, three years, I believe. Yeah. So, transfer we mark, rocks, really, really. Transfer mark rates him at twenty-five million pounds a pata, and we know they are conservative with valuations. He's proven in an elite league and the and the UCL too. Worth it, definitely. Like like you said, Andy, in that Man United game, he was he was just a nuisance physically, yeah. and his his movement is really good too. Um. He's, he's quite quick for the for the size you get. It's like Chris Wood, but he's supercharged. Like he's he, he he's very very talented player. I th- I think that'd be an excellent option. If you can hear a bang, and I apologize, my three year old's having an absolute um, meltdown right. in the living room. He's bouncing up and down like uh, Ultimate Warrior. So uh, Wilson plus Wood equals Zapata. Yeah, that's probably spot on to be honest, because you've got the height of Chris Wood. Yeah. Headers dominant in the air. The rough child, isn't it? Yeah. No, that would be that would be a absolutely tremendous signing, and I think we will do something like that for only twenty mil. We we could definitely do something like that. We'll move on to another player, one that I'm very excited about. Maybe not even for the for the. Well, I like the player a lot, but um, just of what it would do to uh, a certain club in blue. Um. Talking about Anthony Gordon possibly being linked with Newcastle. This has been around for a few weeks, if I'm not mistaken, right? This uh, rumor of him going to Newcastle possibly. This is not one I'm keen on. Really? Not for that money, no. That's true. The money would be a lot. He's got to get more goals and assists and stay on his feet. That would be- let him stay at Everton and get him for half the price when they get relegated. Yeah, but if we take Gordon away from them, I think they go down. I think they're going to struggle regardless, I'll be honest. They I don't, gonna, I don't, yeah. I don't think they're going to be favourite to go down, but I really do think that they might not pull the trigger on Lampard at first and it might get to a point where they, they are quite um, up to their knees in the mud before they uh, act. It might not matter, basically, if they sack him in December or not because they might already be screwed, yeah. Um, according to this on uh, Everton prodigy, Anthony Gordon is keen to join Newcastle this summer. His representatives are pushing the club to find a common ground with the Magpies over a fee. Um, they remain, we remain keen on bolstering our attacking options. We still want to add at least a new striker and a winger before the transfer window is shut. Newcastle failed to strike a deal with Leverkusen target Musa Diaby. Um, he's asking price of more than $60 million, which is a fair price, by the way. Um, was judged too high. He will stay at Leverkusen another year, and I'll definitely be watching tons of Leverkusen games, which I already did. But I'll, I'll definitely. I don't know whether you're able to check there, Steve. But I mean, how many games has Anthony Gordon played in the Premier League? Well, let's let's look that up. Probably right. what under thirty? I would I would I would put money on it's under thirty games. It's his first year, right? I think he he's made a few sub appearances before last season, and he, don't get us wrong, I'm impressed with him. 
Um, but I think that's a heck of a lot of money to be forking out. It's a, it don't get us wrong, it's a future asset if, uh, you know, if he comes in and lights the world up. But I, 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 something about it, I, I, I really don't. I think there's uh, you can go and improve the squad for the same amount of money and it'd be guaranteed results rather than... Right. Brandon, yeah. that ridiculous hairstyle and clothes. Don't Typical see. someone that's got very little hair is picking on someone for the hairstyle, though. All right. Yeah, I know. I love you, Brandon, really, honestly. I know, right? Needs to prove he isn't a one-season wonder. Think Anthony Gordon looked a bright star in a weak side. Yeah. That's true. One thing I will give Anthony Gordon credit for, and I gave Richarlison the same credit for when he moved to, to Everton, is he didn't let the pressure of being in a relegation battle with such a you know, a, a huge side like Everton, like fan pressure and all that. He did so deliver. Kind of and clearly, clearly he doesn't, you know, his performances didn't dip. Even when they were playing really crap in games, it was like yeah. with Bruno, it was, it reminded me of when Bruno, we were losing to Man City for nothing, but Bruno was like the one guy on our team where he was like, this is still nil nil to me. I got to go to the final whistle. He, he still got that. He still got that naivety of a young oh, yeah. player, where he's just fearless and just. And there's going to be a lot of pressure on him being a local lad as well. I mean, you don't want to be part of the the young rising star of the side that gets relegated for the first time from Premier League, do you? Yeah. You know, yeah, Everton's exactly. never been never been relegated from the Premier League, and there was a lot of pressure on him. Surely he showed a lot of character. Like, it's good, you know. The, the signs are great for him. I just think that's a lot of money too early. Gordon is overrated, I think. He offers nothing tangible. Bottom 31% in his position for goals, which he has four. Bottom 13% for assists, three. Bottom 36 for chances created. He's nothing but a passion merchant. I think he does have a lot to prove still. Yeah, I would I would steer clear of Gordon for now. You're right, Andy. If, if, if they get relegated, but he scores 10 and gets 10, yeah, pull the trigger. I was in the courtroom, and I just said what that gentleman's just said there in the comments, my next – sentence would be no further questions you're on i think he summed it up yeah um now let's move on to another one another winger who i'm very very keen very keen about um about signing and that is the star rene wonder kid julian or sorry not julian drexler camel dean Suleimana. drexler was a wonder kid at one point um yeah definitely We've been linked with, um, sorry, we've been linked with Kamal Dean Suleimana as of late. And um, this is the one that I call like this. I, I think he's cool. Yes, please. Him or Doku. You can't go wrong. You can't go wrong with him or Doku. Um, I'm not going to try and say his name, but honestly, get him signed. Get him signed. Yeah. Um, here's the article. There we go. There we go. Okay. So. Uh, Newcastle, this is from the Daily Mail. Make of that of what you will. Uh, Newcastle inquire about exciting Ren winger Kamal Dean Suleimana after being priced out of a Jack Harrison move for $35 million, which I do think, again, that is a little bit much, I think, for Jack Harrison personally. I think he's a really good player, but for me, $35 million, I would rather get Suleimana for twenty than – Jack Harrison, who has done well, he's done well, he's done well. I just see more upside in Camel Dean, personally. You could argue it's a more of a calculated gamble, spend it on Jack Harrison because he's got two seasons in the Premier League. <clears throat> and yeah. if you're going to mirror him to a player, and I, I take this is not me trying to hammer at ESM in any way, shape, or form. I'm just using him as an example. Yeah. In the two seasons that Jack Harrison and ESM have been playing in the Premier League, Jack Harrison's stats are twice as good as ESM's. Now you could just you could argue that that's because it's lead style of play, whereas they're a little bit more gong ho. But fact that the stats speak for themselves. He's got more assists. He's got more goals. You know he yeah. always seems to score against us when he plays. So you could say that's a more calculated gamble. But I am with you. I have watched a little bit of league on since we've been talking the last year, and <clears throat> he has caught the eye when he wasn't injured. He's caught the eye. He's got everything and. He's one for me that the crowd will, or oh, he'll, he'll, he'll love it here. Yeah. No, absolutely. Look, Camel Dean, 
bit of an introduction or some some stuff that you guys should know about him. He's extremely technically gifted, extremely quick with the ball at his feet. Absolutely, he's he's super 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 quick. I mean, the guy he's he's blown past multiple defenders with the ball at his feet. Um, really good finisher too for a winger. Even though the the standard of wingers becoming goal scorers has gone up, he's even mm-hmm. I think he's even above average for that level. Comes from a very good academy in Ghana, and you know Norgeland bought him and flipped him for twenty mil straight away. Um, so clearly, this guy this guy is extremely highly rated, and um, I think yeah, I th- I think this guy could really do some bits for for Ghana um, and and in a uh, in world football. I I really think he's he's got some he's got some crazy talent. Uh, Newcastle have before we. Yeah. Sorry, mate. Before we went live, you said something to me which sums them up. There's, there's a lot of players. You know, we had a player once they called on Femi Martins who was lightning quick when he didn't have the ball at his feet. But when you put the ball at his feet, yeah, it was a little bit. He didn't know where, where the ball was going to go. That kid, yeah. when he's got the ball at his feet, it doesn't seem to be much of a change between yeah. how quick he runs without it and with it. And that is a talent. Yeah, and also uh, his off the ball stuff and his chemistry with Laborde, um, and between the midfield, he 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 really links well. He tracks back, very very exciting, industrious winger. He's got so much to offer. He really really does. Um, the skillful Ghanaian international is regarded one of the brightest prospects playing in Europe, and has had interest already from Leverkusen, who I wouldn't be surprised if we got Diaby and they replace him with this kid and Ajax. Ren paid 17 million, which is a Danish Super League and record. The previous was Sorloth, I believe, um, yeah. to sign a 20 year old from Nordjylland and is now valued. He's already doubled his value about at 30 mil. Um, simple, simply known as Camel Dean, the 20 year old scored four goals in 10 league gun games and made three appearances in the Europa Conference League. Um, Newcastle had considered Leeds United, Jack Harrison, but were put off by his. 35 million price tag. So what Rens one up front for Camel Dean will be key to any deal progressing. The Northeast club are seeking to improve their options up front for the forthcoming season after missing out on Ekatike to PSG. Um, yeah, no, the, and also the thing you also got to think about is um, if they sold Camel Dean Soleimana, they would probably keep Terrier and for, for, Ren, that would be perfect because they know Terrier can bang in goals because he did it last year and has worked his way up. So even if they sold this kid, um, they would be making a stupid amount of money. And they already did just make a stupid amount of money off uh, Matis Tell, who went to Bayern München for 40 million pounds, 17 year old striker, and he's played 79 professional minutes. So wow. if we've got, if, if, you know, Ren, they consistently produce amazing players. Uh, the academy is very good. Scouting is, is top, top class, one of the best in Europe. Um, yeah, I would def, I if, if we could sign him for – I would go as high as 40 at the moment just because I think this kit really, really is worth it. Um, so the is impressive well. thing is, is that the, the, the team plays some great football as well. It reminds like, – we, we were talking – it reminds me of Arsenal back in the day – uh, just after the intervals where you know Wilshire scores that goal where like everyone's one touch, one touch. Ren yeah. do that quite regularly as well. So yeah. Eddie Howe for me is the type of player that wants to play a similar type of to football. They play four three three. Genesio Genesio at Stachene plays four three three. So yeah. he would slot it's right in on the left. Yeah, absolutely. So he might is a real yeah. He's going to cover both wings as well, isn't he? And you could possibly yeah. even say he can play up top if you're really, really sure. It's not that you'd ideally want it, but... Yeah. Well, but he would be fine for running in behind. So it, that's not even... That's not too bad of a last-ditch option. Suleiman is a real prospect. At 20, he's in the top 20% of wingers in Europe for goals. Top 1% for dribbles completed. It actually works off the ball. Yeah, exactly. It, and in that Ren, and in that Ren team, just like how a Man City or Liverpool play, it's not the same quality, but the a lot of the things are very similar. Guys are chasing down the ball. 
quick, one touch. Every one of them from the center back to the forward is good with their feet. And, yeah. you know, we're going to see Nayef Aguerd play for West Ham. He was unreal for Ren last year too. Very, very good center back. So Ren for me or one of my one, – one club I keep, I keep an extremely close eye on because they consistently produce very, very good players. Remember, that's where Peter Cech – they, um, that's where yeah. Arsenal bought them from. Um, obviously, Dembele at, at Barcelona. Mendy as well, wasn't it? What? Mendy went from there as well, didn't he? Mendy, yeah. He went from Ren to uh, Chelsea. And, at, you know, there are certain games where, he, yeah, he makes a silly mistake. But a lot of the games, he looks world class. So, yeah. Um, Craig Whitehouse. I agree, Ginger. But he's doing that against subpar players discussion to be had there i guess can he do it against premier league standard defenders that's always that is, a, that is a good question but the thing is is that if you're playing in a system with one touch that means look if you play if you play one touch football to perfection you could play against anyone and have your way correct and this kid he's got an excellent first touch too very underrated quality of his and he's got he's got great movement off the ball. I'm not really concerned about the Premier League standard defenders. Maybe one concern I would have is against a low block, but even then, Ren last year, there were certain games, granted he wasn't involved in all of them. Um, There's a counter-argument to that as well, Steve. I mean, I, I, I do agree with him. In no way, shape, or form do I believe that the French League defensively is as good as the Premier League. However, that is not... You can't apply that to every single player in the French League. Otherwise, Premier League teams wouldn't go to the French League for players. Yeah. Use Thiago Silva as an example. Sorry, uh, not the noise. But whenever, when Chelsea signed Thiago Silva, I think it was 35, nearly 36 when they signed yeah. him and everyone's going, you know, he struggled at times at PSG. There was games where he did get caught out in behind, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then Chelsea go and win the Champions League and he's you know, one of their key players that gets into the Champions League final to win it has games on match of the day where everyone's picking him out how great he is. You know, you can only beat what's in front of you. Yeah. Yeah, and and, and there's no guarantees with Suleimana, but I I feel more confident in him than I do with some other other prospects or whatever. I just think the kid's got it. He's got it. Um, and he's got something like defenders hate pace and it's and it's not just pace off the ball, it's when he's got the ball. That's I don't care how good of a footballer you are, when you're in a foot race with somebody and they're quicker than you, there's not a lot you can do. That's true. That's true. And especially when like I said, when you're playing one touch football, you've got a it it, it bounces from guy to guy from from you know, a long cross, long diagonal switch to the other field. It's not easy to keep up with. And one thing that I do think would go in his favor also is that Ren Last year and throughout the years at home, they've been a very, very good side. They typically score the first goal within, even against like a PSG, they score very early in the game. And so that forces the team, whether it's Mess or PSG, to come out and actually play. Then mm-hmm. they start to play good football because then even when they can soak up pressure with guys like a yeah. Garrett and Mendy, and then they could just play out. And then there's where you see the space with Suleiman and the guy has proven also that he can do well against a low block. There. I sincerely hope that the, the, the question that the gentleman asked is answered by the fact that we're signing him and he proves it or he, yeah. he doesn't. And I mean, Newcastle, we have a history of signing really, really good league gun players. A really good history of it. Janola, Kabai, Ben Arfa. There is the exception, but uh, yeah. I'm going to use the sort of there, but uh, I can't really use the sort of because I mean, he's, he's won the World Cup, hasn't no, he? So, it, was that, it was that uh, Martinique striker. Uh, well, good. Stefan Gavanche for one. Then we've got yeah, Gufran, who I thought was a good servant of the club. But uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, it, there's been a few examples where we haven't um, made the most of the market. That's it. But times where. I mean, look at Kabai. He made five million pounds for Johan Kabai. It's got to be one. was a stinker. Saive was a stinker. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's. But that goes. That it isn't special for France. There, every league has busts, and sometimes you buy players from other Premier League teams, and he's Premier League proven, and they turn out to be nothing. So you never know. Mm-hmm. You never know. I I watch a lot of French football, and 
it's my favorite league to watch personally. So I, you know, my, my, what? You can't be saying that on a Newcastle United channel. You've got to say the Premier League. You know, Newcastle's the your favourite team, so you've got to be watching Premier League, aren't you? I know. I know I'm yeah. just trying to save you, mate. Sorry. Just, I'm just joking. That's all right. Um, and then, well, let's talk about the other league on player we're linked with, Julian Draxler from um, PSG. Now, this is this is one – I love 50 – I love um, I love league on players. I love the league, obviously. But – this is a signing I'm kind of 50-50 on, to be honest. Uh, Newcastle United make approach to sign Julian Draxler. The news comes from Le Ten Sport in France, who is an, ex- who had, in an exclusive, and but I keep up with French media. They're, they're a pretty decent source. I, I put Le Keep above them, but they're, they're an all right source. Who in exclusive have said their info is that Newcastle have approached PSG about the player's availability and price tag, he was left out of the club's preseason trip to Japan um, and clearly looks to be one of the players the league and club are prepared to let go. Media yeah. in France claiming he is as he is one of as many as 11 players that PSG are looking to offload. This will hopefully keep them on the right side of financial fair play um, and make space in their squad for new signings and reduce the wage bill balance of books. The 10 sport say that they have been – that. Um, Sorry, Le Ten Sport say they have also been told that Newcastle United have been in talks with the players' representatives to see how Julian Draxler would feel about a move and if interested, what his personal demands would be. Uh, PSG played, paid Wolfsburg 35 million euro or pounds back in January 2017. And now in their exclusive Le Ten Sport say that PSG are looking at um, – sell for as much as 30 million euros so 25 million pounds but they could go as low as 17 million pounds Julian this Draxler, is an investment one isn't it Steve yes I'm very 50 50 on this see very- I'm I'm on the edge of it's a calculate if he the problem is with him he's had a lot of it a lot of injuries hasn't he and I think another problem that you've got with him is he can play in so many different positions that he hasn't really held down a position at PSG. He's a master. He's a. He's he's a. What's it, what's the saying? He's a jack of all trades, but a master of none. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He's played me, the majority of his football on the left, but he has been shifted around because his form has been so on and off. And and granted, that's because PSG have other superstars that they play more regularly. Yeah. But if he was at that level, he would bench a Neymar, even though it is Neymar, but that's not how it really works with PSG. But I think he's at an age, he's 29, Yeah, he's at a stage of his career where I think he realises his career's not going to carry on at PSG. Um, uh, yeah, okay, he might be, he, he, if there's other people interested, let, let's just say that there's no other European sides interested in him. I think it's a calculated gamble that the club re- it could really play off footwork because the thought of him and Bruno playing next to each other gets me. Yeah. I, if he if he's fit, he changes us entirely, and he's a very 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 creative midfielder. You can play him on the right. You can play two narrow tens with him. You can yeah. play him off a striker. You can play him in three midfield. Yeah, I think it's a gamble worth taking at what twenty million pound. Yeah, seven seventeen to twenty. I would not do thirty million like. I would agree with Gendra. I think 30 million euros yeah, would be a bit much. 17 is much more what he'd be worth in the market currently. What, what would 17 million buy you? If you look at a, a Premier League midfielder that you would bring into the club, who are you going to be able to bring in for 17 million pounds in, in central midfield from the Premier League that would improve? Her? There's not many. Um, exact, that's my maybe, point. Maybe maybe Alan from Everton. Wait, are you going to get him for seventeen million? 17? And is he going to stay fit? And I don't think on his days as good as Draxler. And he doesn't well, cover Alan, his, his Alan, position. Alan and Draxler aren't the same player because Alan is more of like the rough defensive. Yeah, yeah. Humble. He 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 he's got a nasty. I I actually don't mind Alan. I just think he's inconsistent. But yeah, you're right. There would it would be hard to find a midfielder that can also play. At Wasn't like was Drax a part of the German side that battered Brazil seven 0 in the world or seven one in the world? So. Cup? 
I believe I so. He was. he was in the squad at least. He is a World Cup winner. I know that. I know that. I think I've just got to. I might be entirely wrong. Please tell us in the comments if I'm wrong. But I, I, I vaguely remember watching that day, and he caught the eye. I might be wrong. It might have been Cruz, but um, I, I'm I'm a fan of him, and I think even if he can get 80 percent of his best football, it's better than what some of what we have going forward. I'm not saying he's better than Bruno, but it's a different type of player to Bruno. Um, and he's on the same quality level if he's fully firing than Bruno. I honestly do think he would take us. He, he could be the difference between finishing ninth and seventh. Possibly. I might be getting ahead of myself, but, but I, I really, really do think he's a top player. But it's all going to be down to what's his match fitness like? Is he, Has he played... You know, he's got a point to prove. At that age, I'd be looking at myself going, I'm 29 year old. With my injury record, I'm probably only going to pay until I'm 32, 33. This is, I have to make a decision on what I'm going to do. And whatever I do, I've got to go for it. And hopefully that's us. And he hopefully he does go for it. And that's what, that's what the article continues on to say. With 58 appearances for Germany, he played for the national side as recently as March 2022. Wasn't included in the Euro squad for last year's finals. Regular first team football would obviously massively improve his chances and the fact that it's an upgrade from League onto the Prem. Mm -hmm. Maybe Deschamps values that. Uh, would improve his chances of making the plane to Qatar in November if he can impress in the Prem. On paper, at least, it sounds an ideal signing for Eddie Howe, as he is two footed, can play across the pitch as a winger attacking midfielder most often used on the left, but can also play on the right or centrally as an attacking midfielder. Six foot one and has pace. He's prepared to carry the ball, take his man on. Despite only 17 league starts these past two seasons, he's got six goals and four assists in league gun. If there is indeed substance in this exclusive from France, much will be much will likely depend on the financial side of things and what both PSG and the player will be expecting with Newcastle United looking to make their money stretch as far as possible this summer. Obviously, alone with obligation to buy next summer, water could be particularly attractive. Interesting to watch for. That would be ideal alone, wouldn't it, really? And if he plays, let's say, put a close in there, if he starts 15 games for you, then you have to pay an X, X Y, and Z fee for him. Um, but which yeah. is a good thing because if he's fit, he plays, you know. If he's fully fit, he gets in that side. He plays over Shalvi. He plays over Longstaff. Yeah. He plays over... Uh, Joel Linton even, potentially. But Joel Linton's a different type of midfielder. You know, it yeah, depends definitely. on the system. Yeah. Yeah. Now, would you take... Cover. He's going to cover the right wing and the left wing for you as well. Yeah. And that's important because we definitely do need to upgrade the wings. So, that's a good point. Um I think the key thing to take from our linked players is that we're targeting players that are comfortable on the ball, who can retain the ball and play mm -hmm. the way Eddie Howe wants to play. Zapata would be able to do that because when you play for Atalanta, it's extremely up your up in your face, all over the place. Um, I, you know, Zapata would fit. Draxler, I think, would be a decent fit. Um, who else would we talk about? Nice based on that, Steve, sorry to interrupt you, mate, but based on the uh, Ginger Swizz's uh, comment there, this is why I cannot believe that Lascelles has been confirmed as a captain. Yeah. Because I honestly think he's fourth place centre back. But, anyways, it's all a little bit off subject, but I, I just think he's well, made no, a great not, point there. It's not, it's not off subject, it's Newcastle. So, I mean, I thought, you know, I thought that was weird too, but at the same time, maybe the captaincy role at, in football is kind of going down. A little bit because, um, you know, if Harry Maguire is the captain of Man United, surely when they bought Lissandro Martinez, he's not going to be starting. So maybe that's just our equivalent where it's like Lascelles is not going to be our starter for, for big games or important ones, but he'll be our captain. Maybe the that's problem what is, though, though, you, You're copying a format that is really a disaster at the moment. Man United are in free fall. Yeah, yeah. So. Do you really want to be copying there? No, exactly. I get, I get what you're saying. I, I think he can be a captain without being in, this, in, you know, in the, in the team. Look at Trippier when he was injured. He's still right. in the, in, in, in the dressing room. I just, exactly. I don't understand it personally. 
we'll move on to a, and I know you want to talk about Elliot Anderson. Uh, Jack yeah. mentioned him. I say give Anderson a shot on the right. It's only preseason, um, but he's been one of the better players, young, and had a great loan season with Bristol Rovers. Why not? What are your thoughts on on uh, Elliot Anderson? I like. Did he play? I didn't watch much of the Mainz friendly. I did watch the majority of the 1860 mention one, though. I thought he was pretty good in that. First half, I thought he, he showed yeah. what he was all about. And he pressed the ball. He's good in yeah. tight areas. Um, there's little things in his game that he, he's, he needs to improve, but it's going to be. He's, he's a young lad. I just question. With we're having five subs next season. Right. You don't have to register him as part of the squad which is a huge advantage. What's mm. going to be beneficial to him? Don't get me wrong, if there's a championship club that are fighting for something, going for a playoff place or going for a promotion or a club abroad, like, for example, the Celtic or Rangers or something right. like that. Yes, I totally get it. He'd be part of uh, going out in front of big crowds each week, yeah. learning that pressure, as he would if he was starting games for us. But I just wonder... Would it be more beneficial for us to teach a bit like what Pep did, Pep did with Foden? Keep him around. We're improving our squad continually, or we're hoping to. Is that not going to be more beneficial to him? But having said that, it's no good keeping him around if he's not going to get any games. If he's right. not going to play League Cup games, or he's not going to get minutes off the bench, or he's not going to get FA Cup games, then a loan is. But I don't want him going to a loan where he's in a team that's neither fighting relegation for something to, you know, aim to, or right. going for a playoff or a promotion. Otherwise, like, he's just like Stoke, City, Stoke City to me, the past few years, we, you know, people think that they might go straight back up and they just obviously got Dwight Gale from us. But like, I don't know. I, I think Stoke are going to be middling this year. You know what I mean? If you went to Norwich on loan, you, you yeah. know, that's a team or a Watford because those are, those are the teams that are going to be fighting for something. Not only that, you'd have Peyton there as well, which would might help him focus on his football. Yeah, I, I just think he's got to he's got to go into a, a, a team that have got a, a, a realistic and a target that everyone's going to go right. We know what they're about, we, the, the way they play, and yeah. what they're going to be aiming for, and he can get that target in his head and just aim for it. Not worry about what's happening in Newcastle. Just focus on him. Whereas right. if you go somewhere, for example, Huddersfield, they're not going to, they're not, they're probably not a threat of being relegated, and I don't particularly think that they're going to, they're going to be in the playoff place or get promoted. I don't think him alone will make that difference. Right. So right. it's a hard one, but I, you know, I'd look, I'd be happy either way for him to stay, but if he stays, he's got to get games because it's no good to him and it's no good to the club. What I'll say about Anderson is I trust whatever decision Eddie Howe makes about him because yeah. so far he's had pretty much everything spot on. The only blemish that you could really say about Eddie Howe was the Chris Wood transfer wasn't the best. But even then there were positives. So I think yes. the fact that we're having rushed to get a striker is the fact that we're rushing to getting Chris Wood. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. We've got 38 days or 37 days of the window left. It's longer than the January transfer window. There is plenty of time. Oh, yeah. And the thing is, is when the elite clubs, you know, I hate saying that, but when some of the elite clubs start finishing their deals off, other players are going to come available. <coughs> Excuse me. You might be looking at someone like a, I don't know. I don't know. Let's say you were after Danny Ings, for example. And then all of a sudden Liverpool brings someone else in and Firmino comes available, but you've just spent 27 million on Danny Ings and Firmino's going for the same money. You're going to kick yourself. Right. I honestly do think that they will probably wait for the striker. I think we'll probably get the midfielder in before that. That's probably why I think we haven't been like super, super making all these crazy, crazy signings. Cause I think we knew what we needed. We need, we need to get a Botman and a, competition for Darlow, or sorry, yeah. for Dubrovka, my was long D. Um, and then we signed tri a Target on a permanent. That was easy. That, that was a no-brainer. Um, what I think we're doing now is we're waiting in the winds, and I think something big is going to happen deadline day, in my opinion. Because, like, what if Victor Victor Osiman lately, I've been read, reading reports at Napoli that he's getting into spats with uh, Luciano Spalletti, 
and that he's kind of a bit unsettled. Maybe, maybe in the next week or so or a few days, maybe he's like, you know what? You know, fuck you guys. I want to leave. Um, and so That's maybe, it. you know what I mean? And we've, we've had some departures out like Gail and Karen Clark on loan. So there's some of the wage book up. If it would take a lot of money to get all semen, at least 120, 110 million pounds minimum to get him. Not but, if he's not happy. Exactly. Not if he's not happy. And if we can do staggered payments for 10 million, I think Napoli could do the same and they won't be exactly crazy for money either. Cause they just qualified for the UCL. So, you know, it's, it's proven like by Lucas at Leon for quite a, you know, we yeah. were quoted nearly 60 million euros at the beginning of the window. We're talking now near at a 40 million. Why? Because the, allegedly he's put in, we don't know for definite whether he's put in a transfer request, but he's definitely made it known that he would like to leave. Now, yeah. the more of a player has got that attitude, you don't want that around the squad. Yeah. Regardless of how good of a footballer he is, it has not an effect on everybody else. And therefore, the fee comes down. Yeah, exactly. You know, and it, a player that may not have been realistic to get a month ago, you might be able to get later on. I mean, it is a it's a gamble at times, but I, I, I think it's personally, I think it's a gamble. You've got to leave an important position like that when you've got more options, I think, and you're going to have more options the last three weeks of the window. Yes, yeah, exactly. You might have to bid a million more than you probably will do because other teams are probably going to be interested in. But we've in, got in that the money, well. but we've got the money to to do that as long as they turn out to be good players and. We, like I said, the only blemish really, and you could even their positive suit is Chris Wood. The Guimaraes signing was, in, we knocked that straight out of the park. He's going to be top, top class type of thing. So One other thing I'd say is, as well is I think you were seeing something fantastic coming. I think we've already made one of the best signings of the summer in Botman. Yeah, Botman, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. I, I, that guy can have my wife's kid. He can have my wife's kids, and I, I wouldn't shout. Honestly, he's that good. <laughs> Uh, honestly, I um, think he's going to be potentially yeah. the best centre half of our generation in Newcastle ship. Yeah, yeah, he really could be. Um, going back real quick, just looking at some comments. Um, Ginger Swizz talking about the LaSalle's captaincy thing. Upsetting the apple cart makes no sense when LaSalle's is an influential voice. Thoughts on that? It's it's hard when you. It's not going to be getting. I, I I don't see him getting a lot of games. I don't either. But yeah. you know, if he's happy with that, then then great. If he has an effect on the squad, and he realizes that he's 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 down the pecking Third order. Choice, fourth. Good. Just that like dumb, like dumb it, like dumb it knows his place, and he's cool with it. Yeah, um, it's just, I just question it. The age that he's at. Yeah. Matt Ritchie, well, same really thing. Happy. He knows he knows he's not going to play many games. Um, but he can be a good guy for the dressing room. So, yeah, definitely. What do you guys think the budget we have left is? I honestly would take a chance on Adama Traore from Wolves and let Eddie have a season with him. Ten million, I would take. Yeah, why not? All day, all day, Ten so. million, because Eddie Howe. What the reason why I think that is definitely worth the gamble is because he took Joe Ellington not only moved his position, but upped his performance levels to just stuff we've never seen from him. So I'm more inclined to take a cheap risk, Adama Traore, 10 million. Why not? Maybe Eddie Howe is that guy that figures out, oh, he plays really well as a midfielder. He plays really well here, there. And then that's our new superstar, you know? And he's got yeah. he's got qualities. I don't know. What that's do you less think? than what Middlesbrough played for him, I think. Yeah, exactly. I think Reaching the twelve to sixty, but you know, people say he's a he's a Ferrari with a child behind the wheel. Yeah. But if you remember the the, the season where uh, Jimenez got a lot of goals for Wolves, a yeah. lot of them were assisted by him. Yeah. Or he would be, or he would. It, it was the hockey assist, the pass to the assist. Yeah. No, I mean, I mean, a lot of the way Wolves played the following season as well, when he started at the beginning of the season, was. He gets the ball far right, and it goes to the far post. Yeah, you know, it's a, it doesn't have to be an absolute accurate cross as long as you put it in an area for some, someone to attack, Balls and he's capable the, of that. 
set pieces. Set pieces are key. You just get the ball into the box and something will happen. It doesn't always – it. A lot. some of the times it's own goals, and it's not even accurate. You get the ball into the box, good things will happen. One it's thing you can always say about him is as well, if you're 1-1 with 10 minutes to go and it's been a, a tough game and it's warm and everyone's not good and you see him come on, phew. Yeah. I mean, look at what Dan Byrne turned around and said. He was like, he was happier when he seen Adam Adama Traore go to Barcelona than he was when he, he signed for Newcastle because he, it's the first player that's ever made him feel slow. He's right. paced a burn, isn't he? But like you say, he isn't, he isn't the greatest technical footballer, but... You get him with a bit of if, if the defense is high, and Joel, he's got a bit of run on them. Joel no Lincoln isn't necessarily the greatest technical footballer we've ever seen, but Eddie Howe found somewhere for him to play and get the most out of him. So that's yeah. that's what it's all about for me. For ten million, that's that's a no brainer for me yeah. because it's low risk, potentially high reward. There you go. Um, talking back about Elliot Anderson real quick, uh, Brandon says we shouldn't make the same mistake like we did with Ivan Tony and Armstrong. We need to get youth talent in the squad. Otherwise young talents would never consider coming to our youth Academy. And that's one thing when yeah. we got the takeover, that was like one of the first things I thought about, like, Oh my God, we could have a world-class Academy like Chelsea, Ajax, Star Rene, PSG, Lyon, um, you know, so show okay. have had a really good, you know, I want to be up there with those guys producing consistent quality talent. And, you know, if a player doesn't want to, you know, isn't quite cutting out for us, but he's got amazing potential. If it was like a Kamal Dean Suleiman, if we produced one of those kind of players, he just never had it for us. There would still be clubs like a Leverkusen or an Ajax or whoever uh -huh. that are interested in those guys because, well, it comes from Newcastle Academy. It's very esteemed. Ah, Ren Academy, Ajax Academy, Feyenoord, whatever. When, I think Brandon makes a great point there because yes. what we do with Elliot Anderson might send out a message. You know, you know, Dean Ashton, uh, sorry, Dan Ashton, they'll be looking around going, who's the best young 15, 16 year old players in the country at the moment? You'll be scouting all of them to, to look at them potentially next season to build our academy. But if they see Elliot and Anderson getting sent out on loan for no reason and not getting chances, they might go, well, I'm Why? just going to be stuck in a loan cycle. Exactly. You're right. You're right. Um, yeah. Another comment about Elliot Anderson. I know you wanted to talk about the Sandy a lot because I, I think you're you're a big fan of him, right? I, it, it's not just the, being him in particular. I'm just it, if there's one thing that you you love as a supporter, love whoever you support, is seeing one of your own get get a chance. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, even if the, the that even if they don't show the promise that we've seen from Anderson, you know, there's there's been players like Jamie McLean and back in the day where it got thrown in. The Peter Ramage, for example, wasn't great, but they did a job for you. They got a chance. They moved on. Yeah, this kid could potentially have a big future, regardless of how high we go with Newcastle, whether that might be a first eleven or as a squad player. Right. There's a future for him at Newcastle based on what we've potentially seen. But we do have to see that progression. In I'd rather see that progression up close than at a distance. Right. Personally, I would. And not only that, it's one way of keeping the fans on side when you're given. It could buy Eddie Howe time if, you know, for example, if we go yeah. through a rough patch. You know, because it's buying it into out. it's buying into the local Exactly. And, and not only that, it sends a message to the economy. That you've got a chance. Yeah. If you're good enough, if you're sure that you're committed enough and that you, you – he's from what I've seen in the friendlies, he's got his head down and he's just going, look, I know that I'm possibly not on these guys' levels yet, but I'm going to do everything I can yeah. to at least force your hand to give me a chance. And if I don't take that chance – then fair to send us out on loan and I'll prove it then. Make your job, make, make give your manager something to think about. Exactly. That's what it's all about. Even if we just train Anderson with the first team, he's going to be benefiting from players like Trippier who can teach him things and it's a different intensity rather than him going to a lower league. Because I, from what I've heard from Bristol Rovers fans, I, I think some of them said he was the greatest player to ever play for the club. So I, I a very successful loan spell that's going to benefit him, but – I wonder how much actual learning he did but there. Clearly, he was too good for the league. 
for league one. Take any sport. When you get to a certain level of where you're playing, you plateau until you start playing with better people. And then yeah. when you start playing with them better guys, you go, oh, shit, I've got to raise my game here. I want to be as good as these guys. And even even if you struggle at that level, your game will naturally rise a little bit. Yeah. You know, it's then how you react to that. So, yeah. Yeah, I... I, I Personally, I just like this. I, I just like the same. Given, that. but I I don't see a problem with him being sent on a loan for the right loan. Yeah, and and Jeff Baker makes an interesting suggestion. Make sure you have his contract locked in. Send him on loan to a team that does well with young players: Borussia Dortmund, Ajax, Ren. Ren would be Ren would be good, especially if they let a guy like Borijo or Thierry or 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 Suleimana go, because they're going to need a winger and. If Anderson, look, again, I don't know too much about Elliot Anderson, but he can play on the wing, it seems. So Would Forrest not work? Forrest, I would take that too. That would be definitely a level up, and for, that would benefit Forrest. No, good benefit good English coach. Great Forrest. style of football to play. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, bro, honestly, if off topic a bit, but I think if Nottingham Forrest can like smash it this year, and if Southgate gets the boot, which he will, because England won't do now in the World Cup, Nothing. he could suddenly he could suddenly look at becoming the England manager. I don't know, just a thought, just a thought. Because if he's they've lost, they've, they've lost Spence, I think, which was a, a and James Garner, who was on the United, yeah, yeah. So, um, let's see uh, any other comments that we got. We definitely got a lot. I agree, made Sven Botman class player. Oh, I'm so excited for him. It's so tough to – you know what, actually, something very underrated about this season at Newcastle? We've got so many players that I'm very, very affectionate for more than others. Like, I still haven't bought in the home or away kit. But I'm deciding, who do I want on the name of the back? I could go with Botman, Shar. I love some Dan Byrne. He, that's going to be uh, – I'd I, I'd be proud to have that on my back. I'd love to have a, you know – a target, even I would take that. I really, I like target. It's a shame I don't. It's a shame I and Robin doesn't play anymore because we could add Botman and Robin. Oh, yeah, we could. That's true. Freedom. That's true. I just wanted to point that out, though. I just think that it's just so different at Newcastle. It's so different because when I was, yeah, we we had last year before all this crazy stuff happened, we had Wilson and ASM, and Char was in. It was just it. Completely different feel. Most of those this, guys on our squad I would have on the name of the back of my shirt. A lot this of feeling people. that you're having now it was me when I was 10-year-old, when yeah. during nine-year-old in the 90s, when we're, everything was optimism, hope. You know, yes. I've now got that feeling, but this is the first time you've had that. So it's nice seeing you being um, able to have that optimism and yeah. players like Janol and Ferdinand coming. Every time a player came in, you were excited. Tino coming in. Four foot of snow in Middlesbrough and his fur coat. And you're like, oh, God, this guy's going to be brilliant. You know, these are the things that I'm sure every Newcastle fan is looking forward to. Whether it's the first time that they've experienced this or whether they haven't had it for years. It, it's or exciting. if they've been around for a long, long time and they're just like, hey, another crazy ride. Here we go. Yeah. No, it's it's just it, – it really it really is. It's just awesome. Um, seems like we release players and they suddenly become good. Mikel Marino yeah. at – at Real Sociedad and Ivan Tony, et cetera. Um, but, yeah, Andy, out of these five guys that we've talked about today, um, Harvey Barnes, Paqueta, Draxler, Zapata, and Solimana, um, if you could pick two to sign right now and the other three are maybes, who would you go for for, my, for, for your two biggest priorities? Solimana and Draxler. I would go Sully. I would go Zapata. Number one priority, because I think we need a striker. I think if we're gonna finish like top seven or eight, I think we need a backup striker because we we all know Cal Wilson will get injured. They'll score and then he'll get injured and then come back and score. Um, so that would be my for. And then it would be Suleimana. It would be Suleimana next because I, I we've got a if we find a. You know, clearly our our our, um, our ownership are looking at extremely talented young players to build the future up, not a bunch of guys that you know like mercenary type. QPR. I agree with you. 
I agree with your sense of a striker, but I just think we're either going to go gong ho on money wise on a striker, or we're going to get a young, a young promising striker. You've like got like Sesko, to... Sesko at RB Salzburg. Yes, yeah. I, I, I just think Sapat has too similar standard to Wilson that you could shake the, the tree a little bit and upset Wilson even potentially. I just think if you've got someone that's happy to come in as a young player and yes. not play second fiddle, but know that they're not first choice, or you go out and get a Victor or someone, and Wilson yeah. knows that he's second choice. And I honestly don't it'd be harsh on the guy, but I think if you sat him down in a room and said, look, these are the reasons why, because your track record, not only at Newcastle, but at other clubs, show that you can't be dependent on to play 38 games a season. Now, that's not, please, you know, I'm not hammering the guy. It's not his fault. Yeah. But it's facts. Yeah, it is. Yeah, exactly. And and you've got to make those kind of decisions. Exactly. It's a ruthless business. It is. It's a, it's a result-driven business. That's all it is. Um, but it's exciting. It's exciting for us as, 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 uh, as fans. And I trust the ownership, and I trust Eddie Howe for – however long we got him. So let's just... And I will say this as well, Steve, sorry to interrupt you, but not only just us spend the money of the season, the whole Premier League... Leeds has spent 100 mil plus. Yeah. Think about some that. Some of the investment that's been made by some of the teams. Villa has spent... Villa. Yeah, it's going to... You know, Brentford as much as we are improving... Signings, Nottingham Forest, I'm telling you, when we play Nottingham Forest, that that guy, Musa Niakate, their centre-back... He's a mean motherfucker. He's not going to be right. easy to score against. He is. He's a leader. He's strong. He's he's going to be an except. He's going to save them points. I'll put it like that. And Taiwa Waniwi, I know he's. I, I've heard. I've heard he struggled a little bit when he played against uh, Union Berlin in a friendly. But I'm telling you, that guy is going to be lights out too. I think he'll get at least ten and be very vital for them surviving. Good. To go back to what we discussed just before we came on, the question for everyone in the comments, who's going to win the Golden Boot in the Premier League this ah, season? Ah, Golden Boot. I got no clue. I don't know how much longer we're going on for that, hence why I thought we were getting That's towards right. the end of the video, hence why I've asked that question. Yes. Yeah, well, it is coming to the end of the video. I'll, I'll put that out there as a little audience engagement. Well, we'll do this. Who's going to win the Golden Boot? For the Prem and for us, who's going to be? Yes. The who's going to be our top goal scorer and who's also going to be? Yeah. So what? Who's going to win the Golden Boot for Pio? Yes. Comment down below. Now, who are your picks, Andy? Who are your picks? See, the obvious one is Holland, but I think injuries. Injuries. Yeah, and squad rotation. He just picks up, he just picks up weird injuries. It reminds me of Osiman. Because Osiman last year had a cheekbone thing going on, and he had uh, some muscular stuff, and it was kind of all over the place. The The good thing with those two guys, um, the good thing with those two guys is, is that it's not hamstring, and it's mm. not calves, and it's not recurring. It's just a bunch yeah. of weird all over the place. or Contact like, injuries uh, rather than, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the one consistent one with Holland for injuries is probably some muscular problems, but I think that's more of his body is just growing still because he's still only fucking he's, – he's so young. My educated but, guess is going to be Harry Kane. However, I'm going to take an outside bet and say Lewis Diaz because you know how much I love him. Oh, so. no, I – he is. He is. He is very good. Um, for my and then for Newcastle, Golden Boot. It isn't as obvious. Um, Daniel is saying uh, Son for the Golden Boot in the Prem and Wilson for us. Who are you going to go for for Newcastle? I'm still trying to think of the Golden Boot for the Prem. To be honest, who's going to score the most goals for us this season? Oh God. See, I'd love to see Wilson. But you'd probably right up until Christmas and then you carry it. Oh, God. If we're saying a right wing, I'm going to look stupid, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say Miggy. I know. I Miggy. think he's going to get games this season. Really? I think he's going to play in the 10 position as well, yeah. Really? I'm not saying, I'm not saying he's going to score loads. I just think that he could be. I mean, look at Perez. Perez was a top goal scorer three seasons out of four. 
you know, you, sometimes you only need 10 or 12 goals to, you know, I think. Yeah, but you know, I, my pick is Guimaraes. That's my pick. My I think pick's pick Guimaraes. Either. I think huh? when we bring in, we know his best mate, he'll play Diva. But I've got to base it on the who, what's there now. Yeah, what? So. Yeah, right now I'm gonna say, right now I'm gonna say Gimaraj. I think he's gonna go at least ten and ten, ten assists, ten goals. We can get that out of it if we don't get like a Paqueta. That's the, and but that's the luxury we have with Eddie House four three three is that we have Joel Linton and Gimaraj as our starters. We could we have the luxury for that third guy. It could be a center mid just to do a job like all the those two guys do it could be an attacking mid to get more goals or in certain games we could have a defensive mid one player i'd love it love it to be would be sm but i just don't think he will how do you have more belief in miggy than asm i don't know comments are sl- <laughs> wait <laughs> i know i know hey no hey i, I said it i said it before you know I might get hammered for it, but I just think... Stop the beer, Andy. Stop the beer. I mean, you had two. But no, honestly, I, you're on about who's going to be a top goal scorer. Salah. We might sign someone in January that gets six or seven from January to the end of the season and make you come out the side. You, you never know. But I'm going to go I'm gonna go Gimaraj for our top scorer and for the league, I'm going to go... Darwin. Nunes. Darwin oh. Nunes, yes. And I've been on the beer, have I? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, uh, how? God forbid! God forbid! I, 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 I have a I Liverpool know. striker as I the know, number one goal scorer. I know he's never played a Premier League game, but the I guy- knew I was going to get hammered before I said it. But at least I, I stuck the one. If he get, if he gets three goals in the first five games of the season, a couple of people might send us a message. You know what it is, Andy? You're right. But I've probably got more chances. I hope Miggy uh, does, bro. I hope Miggy fucking goes 20 and 10. That'd be sick. I just, I don't know. I don't think, I think Wilson would be a, it's the logical choice. But at the same please, time, please. but at the same time, the injuries. But like you God. said, we might only need nine or 10. Because the, the good thing about this team is that we have goals all around the park. Didn't, Trippier didn't will probably first... score at three or four. Joe Linton will probably score three or four. Sharp didn't make it the first full season for us uh, get ten goals in all competitions. Maybe first full in- season. I'm sure he came in the January and he didn't score until Crystal Palace. Yeah, he Crystal Palace at him. home. And then the following season, he got a few in the cup run, not were hard. And I'm sure he was taking second top goal scorer overall. I'd be surprised if he even had 15 goals for us, to be fair. I think he, I think he had a 10 or 11 goals in all competitions in his first full season. Uh, but that's 100. what I'm saying. That is not good enough, but that might be enough to be with our goal scorer. Miggy, Miggy has 110 appearances in the Premier League, nine goals, three assists. In the FA Cup, eight and four. There you are. EFL Cup, five goals, one assist. So, I think it was that season, mate. He, he was scoring a few in the cup. Uh, obviously, I'm, we're talking so what, Premier 18, League. 19? Yeah. 2018, 19? Yeah, was that be. that FA Cup game where we played like Muto up top or something stupid like that? Or was that 19? Like, Oxford, Forest knocked it. Uh, was it the season after Forest knocked well, I can't remember. But I know you got a few that season, anyways. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah I'm was... just gambling at the end of the day. I've got to pick oh. somebody. Yeah, I remember the uh, yes, it was it was the the Rochdale game. The Rochdale game, Miggy scored. Um, he scored in the away game one one, and then the replay four one at home. Right, okay, and he scored two against West Brom in the fifth round. Yeah, well, I see. Three and a four. There you go. There's hope for us yet. There is hope. Uh, Brandon FTV, who's clearly drunk because Isaac Hayden is a Norwich player. I think that's his point. It's sarcasm, man. Yeah, it is. Question. Do we have the tallest center backs in Botman and Burn? Yes, but I will educate you on this. Marseille's newest signing from Le Havre. Um, it's a kid. He's a 19-year-old kid named, um, what is his name? Isaac Torre. He's six foot nine. Yeah. Tallest player in Europe's top five leagues. So that's going to be a player I'm really keep my eye on. He's actually very good on the ball. 
If we get – bro, imagine Dan Bur- – how, how tall is Dan Burns? 6'5", 6'7". Six, 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 seven. Six, seven. Seven. Yeah, and if we got Isaac Torre next year, let's say he smashes it for Marseille like Saliba did, six foot nine and 6'7". thing is, though, like, like Botman, it's, it's, he's 22-year-old. And if you look at him, I mean, he's not quite as tall as Dan Burn, but he's a he's unit. 6'3". Six, three. Three. Six, three. He's not stocky. He's, he's not getting he's not getting Rob Walton his dog at night like as he I mean let's be honest good luck yeah um so to answer your question do we have the tallest center backs in Botman and Burn we're partnership, definitely I think partnership yes partnership probably um, maybe at Marseille because they have Isak Torre I'm trying to think Saliba's not there anymore I don't know that's didn't a good he say the league though he didn't say in Europe I think he said the league well he didn't say either to be fair all right sorry yeah, yeah so didn't have either. Um, but yes, let's see any other comments to address real quick. We'll hop off in a few minutes, but, um, but yeah, um, Jeff makes a case for Wilson to be top scorer because of our Brazilian midfield. Anybody else said Miggy by any chance? (laughs) No one has said Miggy. I didn't think so either. Almiron will only get better. Oh, Wayne, Wayne is kind of on your side. Wayne. I hope you guys, I hope you guys are right. This is is this Miggy's biggest season in his career. It's a season that's going to make or break his Newcastle career. Yes, yes. which is why I'm, I'm trying to have a little bit of hope in him. And if you look at his preseason, he's he's, he's not started too badly. Yes, okay, it's proper. You know, it's preseason. Eighteen sixty München in the Dritte Liga. Ooh. I know. However, it, it's. <laughs> but at the yeah. same time, Wilson, he got more goals and assists than Wilson's getting in that time. So let's just, you know, at least. Lewis went for an attack, uh, a striker. Chris Wood top scorer. If Chris Wood's our top goal scorer, I'm, I'm not even. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> I mean, I, I can't criticize after seeing Mickey. I mean, let's be. Honest. I know you can't Chris. talk much, man. Fucking. I'll up. just shut up. <laughs> Anyways, but um, yeah, we're gonna end it there, guys. Um, thank you so much for watching an hour and a half stream. Very, very nice. Um, I love the interaction. We we were always at pretty much ninety or hundred people watching at once. So. That's awesome. So, um, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm gonna try to do some more. Sorry live for my internet, videos. guys. No, nah, it's it's fine. It's fine. Just always. And me calls. predictions, obviously, as well. No, nah, it's alright. Um, but yes, definitely. Thank you guys for watching. And before um, before I let you guys know, just definitely, can, you know, consider becoming a member of the channel. And in 99 pence, you get to find out um who's on the greenwood moliner show 30 plus videos a month of behind the scenes stuff um and also you'll 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 be able to see what um what plans we have in store besides just the um the greenwood and moliner show like videos we're gonna do or stuff that lee's got going on um it's it's really interesting stuff 99 pence you get a bunch of content so um and just like that steve yeah not only that, they'll get the Discord, which means they can tell us how silly I am for picking Miggy. Yeah, get in the Discord and tell Andy he's a fucking... Yeah. No, no, keep going. You can finish he's that drunkard. sentence. Going. He's a drunkard for picking Miggy Alvaro. I, I wish I could get drunk off too, but uh, yeah, it was, probably wasn't my, my finest moment, but uh, we'll see. Put a bet on it, you'd win a shit ton of money, I bet. <laughs> if I put anyway. a tenner on it, I'll lose a tenner more than likely, but there you are. Yeah, exactly. But um, yeah, thanks a bunch, guys, for watching. Consider becoming a member, and I will see you guys later.